Hamza is a YouTuber that most of you that clicked on this video have probably heard of. From fitness to business to relationship advice, young men would tune in and listen to his advice on life that was generally helpful to men who were still finding themselves. I was one of them. As I was entering my 20s, I felt a bit lost. I started dabbling in fitness and wanted to start a business, but I had no experience or anyone to teach me, and so I found his channel. He had charisma and spoke with conviction. He knew something that you didn't and that made you want to pay attention and listen. The first video I watched was the how to build an aesthetic body, no bullshit guide, and it really motivated me. I started watching his videos every time he would appear on my homepage and I became a part of his cult. But two years ago I stopped watching him. I just felt like I got everything that I needed from his channel and that the tips he was giving in his newest videos were just repeating the same message that was already said. Alright, so let me stop myself there. Why am I making this video? Well, it has to do with his recent videos and his overall mentality. We will dive into the history of his channel and see why and how he turned from a respectable mentor figure to a person considered to be all talk and only interested in money. But before we do, I'd like to humbly ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy content like this. It helps me out a ton and it only takes a second. Thank you. Back to the video. When people mention fitness influencers, the first instinct is to roll your eyes into the back of your head and for a good reason. 80% of them just want to sell their course and get rich off of you being miserable. That was one of the things that separated Hamza from his competition. He didn't preach to you about how by buying his course you will unlock the hidden formula to becoming rich. This one magical word that will change everything. He kept it real and offered free information within his channel and rather than selling you a pipe dream, forced you to wake up and take action. This will be important later, so keep it in mind. But something became to slowly change. Slight hints that he was losing himself and straying away from things that he was preaching. I believe first cracks started showing with his Sneeko drama. It all started with Sneeko making some jokes about him while reacting to his A Day in a Life video, where Hamza was doing some stretches. Hamza then responded to that video saying that Sneeko has a fragile masculinity and bringing up his past relationships and calling him a cuck. This drama went on for a while and then one day they decided they wanted to squish the drama. Sneeko called Hamza and wanted to talk to him while streaming and put the beef behind them. And it was going well until the last couple of minutes where Hamza showed his true colors. He completely assassinated his character and ended up looking more immature than a mid-schooler by calling Sneeko his bitch and just being petty. <laughs> Alright Hamza man, uh, beef squashed. Thank you for finally calling, bro. I'm going to drop it. I might stretch here and there. I might stretch on the Discord. I'm not going to lie to you, but... Sneeko, I'm not going to lie. The reason why I found this funny is because I feel like I treated you like how I used to treat the girls. I was a fuckboy. Mm. I got you emotional, and then I just didn't really open up any of your messages for a while, and then literally you just kept on calling me. You called me like 15 times. You've been sat here just like frame lost, really emotional. And um, it made me cringe a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. You're calling me cringy right now? Bro, you called my old number like 15 times. On stream for content. I don't care about you. I'm trying to get the content and show people that they should end up like me. You, wait, wait, wait. You're calling me cringe after making a video saying don't end up like me? I treated you like a little bitch, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> All this seemingly came out of the blue because it seemed like they left the beef behind them and Hamza even said in his response video that he had respect for Sneeko's old content and what he stood for. So why would he do something like that? Someone who was an icon for so many young men did something that petty. Hamza would respond to this with his video called Don't End Up Like Hamza where he would admit he made a mistake and knows making low blows over a simple joke was a bit too far. What's interesting is the comment section. There was a clear divide. Most of the comments are positive saying how it's mature to admit when you're wrong and while true, it's also funny how those are the same people that were echoing his statement about Sneeko before. They're just repeating what Hamza says or thinks, a literal echo chamber. Adieu. On the other hand, you have people calling out his behavior and questioning if he truly feels bad about what he's done or is it simply due to backlash. Michael Drift made a really good video about how Hamza created this cult following that makes people want to defend Hamza 
even when he's in the wrong. I almost fell for that trap too. When you idolize someone, you forget that they are human because in your eyes, they are perfect and can do no wrong. But that is just a front, a side of them that they showed on the internet heavily edited and distorted. After the drama, he would keep uploading videos for a year, but they started to feel a bit different. He started contradicting himself often and going back on his word, discrediting himself in the process. For an example, he fired all of his editors and said how he's retiring from YouTube and that the ADHD Mr. Beast type video editing is gone. He said he would upload here and there and that he wants to be a fighter. It was short lived as he only lasted a day. It's the biggest piece of dog shit. Do you know how bad that looks for a man who is supposed cult leader? I just imagine him going there, getting punched in the face and being like, yeah, nah, I wanna chill in my room and make millions. Right, so fighting isn't for him. He said so, he's done with that, and that isn't his purpose. He went back to the ADHD editing style and he kept uploading content as he used to. But his purpose was different now. His purpose is to start a family. He was planning to move to Scotland and now get this. He broke up with his girlfriend because she wanted that quiet life while he wanted that city life. So this man dumped the future mother of his children because she wanted to live a quiet life. This crazy situation is truly insane. So clearly we can see that he isn't really fit to be giving advice like this to his impressionable fans because he has absolutely no idea what he's talking about. He thinks playing video games is childish and unmasculine and it's like, okay, if you watch two hours of, I don't know, Breaking Bad. You don't decontaminate. Why are you even trying to... Or play two hours of Rocket League. I don't think it really makes a difference. Rotting inside and playing League a whole day is a different thing, of course, but playing a few games after work or school is really not that big of a deal. But the most recent drama he found himself in was his Adonis school. And what did I say at the start of the video with fitness influencers? Selling courses. And here we are for only $120 a month. $120 month is crazy, by the way. You can join his school where he will unleash his ancient wisdom and make you a millionaire. Or whatever they all say. It's funny because it reminds me of this encounter in Red Dead Redemption 2 where a guy wants to sell his book on how to get rich for like $50. That's probably like 500 million in today's money. And if you want to buy the book, it's just useless trash. Hello, friend. Do you want to be rich? I already got the book. Oh, well, that's terrific. How are you getting along? Well, I'm clearly not rich. Come on, buddy, you gotta work harder. Read the equations. Follow the 38 steps to wealth. Be a man. I think I'd like my money back. Basically, the only person getting rich from that is the seller, and it remains true till this day. People that bought the course said almost all the things in there are already available on the internet or was already mentioned in his previous videos. Many fans started to turn on him and woke up from the brainwashing. They started to realize that his ego took a hold of him and that he wasn't trying to make his viewers' lives better, he was just trying to make them into him. And by the way, all this cult leader thing is not something I made up. He said so himself multiple times and refers to himself as the cult leader. His Instagram bio literally says so. The reason I wanted to make this video was to call out his behavior, as it is quite dangerous and could ruin other people's lives. He is giving potentially harmful advice to a lot of impressionable young men that are still discovering themselves and because he says it with conviction and because he is wealthy and has a good physique, they take it as word of God not questioning it for a second. Hopefully with this video I shed some light on his channel and him as a person. Maybe even some cult members woke up from his brainwashing and realized that they will keep being a Jeffrey as long as they keep watching him and consuming his content. But I'm interested to hear what you have to say. Are you still going to be a Jeffrey or are you going to be Adonis? And subscribe. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Buy my course though, lol.